over every mountain there is a path. Although it might always not be visible from the valley, but that doesn't mean that the path doesn't exist. It does exist. All we need to do is to trace it out. Similarly, behind every small phenomena happening around us, there exists a scientific explanation. Some mysteries successfully solved and many yet to be addressed. Fine. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why do we have almond shaped eyes? Well, I would love to have rounded eyes like that of Doraemon. If such questions come to your mind as well, it's time for you to now pat your back because you have a hidden scientist in you. Since childhood, I had a lot of inclination towards the healthcare sector. I got fascinated observing various doctors, the diagnostic tools and therapeutic devices. My mom never wanted to take me to a hospital. She felt if I go to a hospital, even I would fall ill. I never understood that logic. Just a few months back, my aunt met with an accident. She was under treatment for several days, after which she recovered and was, full, and was discharged. But unfortunately, she again got, she got readmitted to hospital due to prosthetic failure. This was something quite strange, as I had been observing this pattern among a lot of my relatives. I immediately went to a doctor to inquire about it. And there I came to know about nosocomial infections, or popularly known as hospital acquired infections. In simple words, these are the infections that a patient doesn't have before coming to a hospital, but acquires them on being treated with various medical devices and implants. Let me give you an example that is commonly being encountered. Recently, a patient got hospitalized on account of road accident. Due to severe damage in his tracheal portion, this patient was supported with an endotracheal tube that assisted him in breathing. It was observed Within 24 hours of the insertion of this tube, thick dense layer of bacterial biofilm was formed, both at the outer as well as in the inner surface of the tube. This patient has no cuff reflex as the tube is inside. And so the secretions tend to get accumulated inside the lungs. When a long catheter is inserted through the tube to aspirate the secretions repeatedly. This biofilm gets dislodged and goes deep inside the lungs. It was a road accident that brought this patient to a hospital. And now he's there with pneumonia. There were no symptoms or any bacterial infection associated with the patient before coming to a hospital. But he got hospital acquired pneumonia on being treated for road accident. According to Centers for Disease Control, nosocomial infections account for an estimated 1.7 million infections and 99,000 associated deaths each year in American hospitals. Surgical infections are believed to account for, its, for an estimated $10 billion annually in healthcare expenditure. In Indian hospitals, 
there is no uniform and proper method of collection and maintenance of data related to nosocomial infections. As a result, a large fraction of the Indian population is usually unaware of this alarming situation that could even risk their lives. It is believed that the statistics related to nosocomial infection would go higher in Indian hospitals, which are usually not revealed as it could create panic among patients that could adversely affect the smooth functioning of a hospital. If you steal something from an author, it becomes plagiarism. But if you steal from many authors, it becomes a paper. The first question that striked my mind as I heard of nosocomial infection was, why are the patients being treated with such high doses of antibiotics despite getting infections from bed bugs, rather preventing them from getting the infection? Well, all these high doses of antibiotics have already been tried, but the bacteria have now gained resistance against all of them. Presently, research focuses on creating vertically oriented graphene spikes that could splice up bacterial cells without affecting mammalian cells due to their size differences. Owing to the developments in nanotechnology, nanoparticles, due to their small size and high surface area to volume ratio, have paved new path for research to cure hospital acquired infections. My mentor always pushed me to ask these questions to myself. What is our research question? Why is this question important? How can we go about answering these questions? What would be the implications of these results? Would it add on to present knowledge and uplift healthcare? Initially, I didn't have answered to so many questions. I have been constantly told to read a lot of journals, to observe and analyze every small phenomena happening around me. All these completely changed my level of thinking. I, did, I discovered in myself a sense of curiosity, a desire to love, learn, and explore anything related to healthcare. As I was guided through the process of examining literature and designing a project, I started building new ideas and eventually solved every riddle that came my way. With each day, I started identifying a better version of myself that could give scientific explanation in a better way. Life always doesn't take you the way you decide. Sometimes destiny decides, not you. To be very honest, I loved healthcare sector a lot. But I got scared seeing caregivers, doctors, and patients running all over ICUs and emotions associated with them. I wanted to explore new things but I was scared. What if I fail? Fortunately, I'm a part of Manipal Academy of Higher Education that had provided me with all opportunities, assistance, and guidance to continue with my research project. Eventually, I started working on all high-tech machines and research equipments that I have been reading in my textbooks. Initially, I visualized and learned the basic principle and working of machines like Malt-ID, Vitec, SEM, AFM, XRD, UV spectroscopy, 
and today I'm able, able to interpret your results and implement them in my research. Along the course of my research, I also learned to justify each and every experiment that I conducted. Many a times my experiments failed and I didn't get an expected outcome. I learned not to lose hope, to believe in myself and continue my work with some other logic. All this completely changed my vision to approach a scientific question. Presently, I'm looking forward to a multi-scale surface topography to minimize adhesion of nosocomial drug-resistant bacteria. The problem with the world is that research begets more doubts among people who are trying to find a particular solution to a problem through research. While doing my research, one thing that I prominently learned in life, the more we know some, the more we know something, the more we realize how much we don't know. The less we know, the more we think we know everything. Curiosity should never end in someone's life in order to attain cognizance. And so I believe the secret of cognizance is to focus all our energy not on fighting the old but on building a new or to improve the existing one. When life is foggy, path is unclear and mind remains dull. But this fog has to eventually fade. I believe in sunshine that has the power to overcome all dark clouds and to resolve all unsolved equations of life. What could be the use of a scientist's time, energy and grant funding? Should researchers investigate the fundamental nature of the universe or cure cancer? Or rather, could there be a way to ensure that we do both? Although financial support is hard to get. In an age where science has invoked to solve problems of global significance, fundamental research, fundamental scientific research forms the base over which the pillars of technology can be built. But it is unfortunate that fundamental research purposes are less defined. And hence, a lot of research is being done just for the sake of doing it. Hence, it has become a prime concern for us to first identify the actual problems that needs to be addressed. Millions will continue to go to their graveyards, silent, saddened, and embittered. Hence, there has to be a proper balance between public needs and the researches that are being focused on. Research has to be given a very high priority in developing countries like India. Most of the research being done in academic institution is with the focus to add on to the number of published papers rather than on improving the quality. So the result of these research represent just information in papers and not investing the research results to benefits to a community. And hence, scholars usually tend to move to other countries to pursue higher, in, higher goals in research. And this happens the brain drain. Apart from focusing on constructive research, implementation of the research results has to be prioritized as well. Research and development is the bedrock of innovation. We have to make research 
much more attractive so as to get more talented people interested in this field. This is how we can improve the quality of life and add on to the economic standards of our country. Research is like a jigsaw puzzle. Everything seems complicated initially, but as we start solving them, bringing all the pieces together, image gets clearer and clearer, and it bears the fruit that has never been tasted. Thank you.